Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well today. In this video, I'm going to be discussing all the major operations in math and the order in which we solve them. While you can find the timestamps here, they're also linked in the description. If the world didn't agree on one specific order of solving all the operations, you can imagine that would be very difficult for everyone to be on the same page. Imagine if you were playing a game or a sport and everybody was following different rules. Since it wouldn't be very productive or fun, it's important to agree on a set of rules for everyone to follow. Let's talk about each of the operations on their own and then combine them so that we can learn how to use them together. Let's start with addition and subtraction. Since addition and subtraction are inverse operations, they're equally important. What about multiplication or division? Since multiplication and division are also inverse operations, they're equally important as well. While you may see multiplication like 5 times 8 using a dot, you could also see it as 5 parentheses 8, which also means multiplication. And for division, sometimes you won't see a division symbol and you'll see a fraction bar instead. That implies division. Now let's talk about powers or exponents. Here's a couple examples of powers. Some parts of the world more commonly call them indices. When they say index, they're referring to a square root. So imagine like if you had the square root of 4. Another way of writing the square root of 4 is going to be 4 to the 1 half power. Similarly, if we had the cube root of 27, that would be equal to 27 to the 1 third power. While you don't have to worry about these in pre-algebra, these will come up more in Algebra 1 and in Algebra 2. And finally, we have grouping symbols. Some common grouping symbols you'll see are parentheses, brackets, and braces. Another common grouping symbol you'll see is a fraction bar. Whenever you see a fraction bar, whatever is on top is always grouped together, and whatever is on bottom is also grouped together. While we don't see the parentheses around the top and the bottom, it's implied if you see a fraction bar between them. While there's a lot of math operations out there in the world, these are the main ones we use. So everyone's following the same rules of the game and the same order of operations. Grouping symbols always get priority, then powers come next. Multiplication and division are equally important, whichever one you see first from left to right. And addition and subtraction always comes last, whichever one you see first from left to right. Whenever you see multiplication or division in a problem, make sure you just do whichever one is to the left first. Don't fall into the trap of thinking that multiplication always comes first. That's just not true. Just like multiplication and division, make sure you solve whichever one of these operations you see first from left to right in the problem. While some people use PEMDAS to remember the order of operations, there are also many people out there that use BODMAS or BIDMAS. This is parentheses, exponent, multiplication or division, and addition or subtraction. This is brackets, orders of power, division or multiplication, and addition or subtraction. And this is brackets, indices, division or multiplication, and addition or subtraction. Keep in mind that while these are three different acronyms, they all mean the same thing. Here we can see subtraction, here's an exponent, this is multiplication, this is addition, here's subtraction, and here's a grouping symbol. While we have so many choices, we have to start with the grouping symbol. Our grouping symbol tells us that we must solve what's ever inside this parentheses first. Solving what's in the parentheses or grouping symbol first, 7 minus 5 is just going to be positive 2. Whenever you just have one number left inside of a grouping symbol, you don't have to write the grouping symbol anymore. Now that we don't have any more grouping symbols, the power or exponent will come next. Since 3 squared is 9, we can write... From the three operations we have left, multiplication is the most important. Since 9 times 5 is 45, we can write... Since addition and subtraction are equally important, we go from left to right. 60 minus 45 is 15, so we'll write... With only one operation left, our final answer here is going to be 17. Following the order of operations, this would be our solution. Now that you have a little better understanding of how the operations work and the order that we have to use them, let's go through some examples together. Here in example one, we're going to evaluate some expressions that don't have exponents or grouping symbols yet. For this first one, we have two operations, but multiplication is more important than subtraction. Since 7 times 4 is 28, we're going to write 8 plus 28. With one operation left, we can add 8 plus 28 to get 36. Let's try another here. While there are three operations, the multiplication and division is more important than the subtraction. Since multiplication comes earlier in the problem, it gets to go first. 5 times 6 is 30, so we're going to write 30 minus 80 divided by 5. Between subtraction and division, division is more important. 80 divided by 5 is 16, so we'll write 30 minus 16. With one operation left, we'll just do 30 minus 16, and that's going to be 14. That'll be our answer. 
Pause the video and see if you can tell which operation should come first. If you were thinking division, good job. While division and multiplication are equally important, the division comes first in a problem reading left to right. 18 divided by 6 is going to be 3, so we're going to have... Between these three operations, multiplication is going to come first, and 3 times 2 is 6. We can write... Since these operations are equally important, we'll add 15 plus 3, and we can write... With one operation left, we'll subtract 18 minus 6 to get 12. This is the value of this expression. Here in example 2, let's try some problems that have exponents included. Our new operation of exponents here is going to take priority. This 3 squared is really just 3 times 3, and that's equal to 9. After evaluating our exponent, we're going to have... Out of these three operations, division goes first. 15 divided by 15 equals 1, so we're going to have... Here we have two addition problems, so we're just going to go from left to right. 5 plus 9 is 14, so we're going to write... And finally, 14 plus 1 is equal to 15. That's our answer for this first one. Here in this next one, we're going to start off with our exponents again. 6 to the second power is the same thing as 6 times 6, which is equal to 36. From that, we can write... Next, we're going to divide 24 by 3. 24 divided by 3 is going to be 8, so we're going to have... Since addition and subtraction are equally important, we're just going to go from left to right here. 8 plus 36 is going to be 44, so we're going to have... That's the answer to this expression. Let's try one more of these types. Notice how we have two different exponents, but we're going to do the one on the left because it comes first. This 2 cubed is really just 2 times 2 times 2, and that's equal to 8. That makes our next line... Since we still have an exponent, let's solve that next. This 3 squared is really 3 times 3, and that's equal to 9. Our next line is going to be... We have two division problems, but we're going to solve the one on the left first. 16 divided by 8 is going to be 2, so we're going to have... Next, we're going to divide 45 by 9, and we could write 2 plus 5, and 2 plus 5 equals 7. That's the answer to this third one. Here in example 3, we're going to evaluate some expressions that also have grouping symbols. For this first one, we have two sets of parentheses, so we're going to do the one on the left first. 4 plus 3 is going to be 7, so we're going to have 5 times 7 plus 8 times a quantity of 7 minus 5. Now let's solve what's inside this grouping symbol. 7 minus 5 is going to equal 2, so we can write 5 times 7 plus 8 times 2. Remember that this 5 and this 8 are multiplying by what's inside the parentheses because there's no symbol between them. Whenever you don't see an operation, it's safe to assume that you're multiplying. Next, we're going to multiply 5 times 7 to get 35, and we'll write 35 plus 8 times 2. Then we'll multiply 8 times 2 to get 16, and we can write 35 plus 16. Finally, we can add 35 plus 16 to get 51. That's the answer to this first one. Now let's try one with a fraction bar. Remember that a fraction bar is just a type of grouping symbol, so the numerator is grouped together and the denominator is grouped together. Not only that, but the fraction bar also means division. Let's rewrite this problem here. Since we have two sets of parentheses, we're going to solve the one on the left first. Inside the parentheses, this exponent will go first. 4 squared is 16, so we're going to write... Still looking inside this set of parentheses, we're now going to add this 3 and 16 to get 19. Then we'll have... Finally, we can subtract this 19 minus 1 and write... Now that we're done with that grouping symbol, let's look over here. Looking inside this parentheses, we'll have to solve this 5 squared first. 5 squared is going to be 25, so we can write... Still looking inside this parentheses, we're now going to solve this 4 squared. 4 squared is equal to 16, so we're going to write... Finally, we can subtract 25 minus 16 to get 9. We can now write... And finally, 18 divided by 9 is equal to 2. That's the answer to the second one. Let's try one more of these together. First, we would look inside this pair of brackets, but inside there, this set of parentheses has to come first. 18 minus 13 is equal to 5, so we can write... Since this 2 next to the parentheses means multiplication, 
we can change the parentheses to a dot for multiplication. Next, we're going to multiply this 2 times 5 to get 10. Then we can write 3 plus 10 is 13, so we're going to have 6 times 13. And finally, let's multiply 6 times 13 to get 78. That'll be our final answer here. Here in example 4, I'm going to solve two numerical expressions with rational numbers. For this first one, you may initially think to look at these parentheses, but since there's only one thing inside of them, there's nothing we can actually solve. The parentheses around the 2.1 are just there to let you know that we're multiplying 4 times 2.1. If that's the case, the exponent's the most important thing to do first. 0.5 squared is equal to 0.5 times 0.5, which is going to be 0.25. Our next line is going to be... Next, we're going to multiply 4 times 2.1 to get 8.4. Our next line is going to be... Between subtraction and addition here, we're going to do the subtraction first. 15.3 minus 8.4 is equal to 6.9, so we can write 6.9 plus 0.25. For our final step, we're going to add 6.9 and 0.25 to get 7 and 15 hundredths. That's our answer to this first one here. Here's one last problem, dealing with fractions instead. Our first step is going to be evaluating this 1 half to the third power. 1 half cubed is equal to 1 half times 1 half times 1 half. In the numerator, we're going to get 1, and the denominator, we're going to get 8. In our next line, we're going to write... From here, we're going to multiply our 3 times 4 thirds. 3 is the same thing as 3 over 1, and multiplying by 4 thirds, we can cross-cancel the 3s here to make 1 and 1. Multiplying the numerators together, we're going to get 4, and the denominators, we're going to get 1. This simplifies down to just 4 wholes. So in our next line, we're going to write... Going from left to right, we can add 3 fourths plus 4 to get 4 and 3 fourths. And to add these two fractions together, we need a common denominator. The LCD here is going to be 8, so we can write 4 and 6 eighths plus 1 eighth. Added together, this is going to be 4 and 7 eighths. And that is our final answer. And that wraps up this video on basic order of operations problems. Keep up the good work, and I'll see you in the next one.